morning. Morning. How are you all doing? Great. Pretty good. <clears throat> Hi, Miss Virginia. Good morning. How are you, Miss Lewis? I'm good. How you doing, Annette? Good. How are you? <laughs> Good. Are you, Pastor, and Fred is doing good this morning? Oh, well, I I, I, I kind of miss Fred. and I didn't hear him. Oh, you hear him. Don't you hear him now? School this morning. You hear him now? Nope. There we go. Okay. Now Sunday <laughs> school. That, that is the, the official call to worship of Sunday <laughs> school. It's Fred Flintstone saying it's Sunday school time. Yabba dabba do. Yes, do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Sister Jackie, please, if you would open us in our Sunday school this morning. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's say the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God. the Father oh, Almighty, Almighty, maker of maker heaven and earth. earth. And in Jesus, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, Christ in love with the Son, our Lord, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered on the Pontius Pilate, 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 was crucified, and buried, and the third day, and the day he rose from, from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then shall come, shall come to judge the quick the and dead. I believe in the, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for your spirit of righteousness. Mm -hmm. May we learn from the life of Joseph how to be kind and to do everything you ask, no matter how difficult. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, come thy will, will be done on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us Give this, us day, this day, day, our daily bread, day and, and forgive us our trespasses. As we and forgive those you know, who trespass against us, us and lead us lead not us into temptation, but deliver us, us from evil. For, for the power, the power, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 Today's lesson is on page eight, called Before Birth. The lesson scripture is from Matthew chapter one verses 18 through 25. And the focus scripture is also chapter Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. The key verses together, Joseph, Joseph son of David, David, do not be afraid, afraid to take Mary, Mary and Jesus for a while. For the child who is in her is from the Holy Spirit. Spirit. She, she will bear, bear a son. son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 20b through 21, New Revised Standard Version. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her and husband, husband Joseph, Joseph, being a righteous man, right man, man, man and unwilling to expose her to the public, this great man is quiet. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will be her son, son, and, and you are to name him Jesus, Jesus, 
or he or will, he will save, save his people from, from their, their sins. From their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Look, and they shall name Emmanuel, which means God is God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. 25. But he had, had no marital relations with her, her until she had born a son. And he named him Jesus. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hear what Christ our Savior said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul <clears throat> and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be, Glory to, the be Father, to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and, and to the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, as it was, as it was in the was beginning, beginning, is now, and, and ever shall, shall be, be. world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Sister Smith. You did. Okay. I'm unmuted now. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Okay. Good, good. Wonderful. I'm going to ask first, instead of calling on someone, will someone volunteer to give us the class opening prayer? I will. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I come to you as humble as I know how. Thank you for giving us for all our sins, those known and unknown. These things I ask in my Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> well, okay. Our lesson today, how before birth. And we're studying uh, Matthews 1. 18 through 25. And I would like for the class just to go beyond um, thinking about only Jesus called before birth, because of course, that's the essence of today's lesson. But we often quote a lot of scriptures about call before birth. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremiah, when he, he uh, said to God, no, God, I'm too young to do what you're asking me to do. And what did God tell him? Anybody? I knew you before you were formed you in your mother's womb. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And and so uh, Jeremiah also had a very another very popular uh, scripture when, when God says, uh, I know the plans that I have for you. You know, they are plans of good to prosper you you know, not to harm you. And so the question just laying out in the atmosphere is, uh, do you know what God's plan for you is? Do you all know that God has a plan for each one of us? Yeah. yeah. You know, and we got to do that self-examination. God, am I doing what you call me to do? You know, could I do more? to glorify your name, not for me to get any glory, but to glorify your name. Could I do more? So those are questions that um, in a life application sense that we just need to just mull on that, think on that, mm -hmm. you know? Are we called before birth? And I heard you all say yes, <laughs> okay. So last week when we discussed um, being called by your heritage and uh, we discussed Jesus's uh, genealogy last week and we found that uh, sin has overtaken some of the best of God's people mm -hmm. and many of, of them were ancestors of the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. um, last week we talked about um, Jesus, um, I mean God has spoken by his son 
last week's lesson reminded us that in times past, God spoke through the prophets, whether that was through dreams, visions, uh, when basically the Bible says dreams and, and visions, when God spoke through his prophets. But the lesson last week told us in the last days that God would talk through his son, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Would anybody remember why uh, we said in our lesson last week that God will talk through his son, Jesus? Any reasons why we said that? Uh, because we are um, s- uh, sons and daughters and brothers and sisters of Jesus. And so he talks to us as his siblings, as as to what the father is saying to him for us. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, Don't make me say, wake up, Mr. Two Things. I'm not going to do it right now, but I know (laughs) you're on here. I wanted to uh, I wanted to give other people a chance. Well, <laughs> when the <church> is silent, <laughs> their chance passed right on by. <laughs> because I was on the phone. <laughs> um, In Sunday school? Go ahead. Yes, people don't understand. Okay. Go ahead, Brother Wade. Uh, really uh, quickly, uh, so you could uh, develop that relationship. And mm-hmm. we all know that I like that R word, that relationship uh, with Jesus. And in developing that relationship, we developed that relationship by emulating what uh, uh, his teachings as well as praying. Okay, very good. All right, uh, Sister Jerry, did you want to add? No, because I, I, I didn't understand. I did repeat the question. Oh, that's okay. You are on the phone. <laughs> um, <laughs> what we talked about last week about God. <laughs> speaks to his son during the last days and we say well what about Jesus that that would make God want to speak to him to us and uh, last week we said that because um, Jesus is appointed the heir of of things all things not things or something (laughs) Jesus is the heir to all things he has the power of heaven and earth in his hands Mm-hmm. And through him, the world was created, mm-hmm. and that he is the reflection of God's glory. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you want to see God, see, see me, mm-hmm. <laughs> was Jesus's message, okay? Mm-hmm. And that he sustains all things by his powerful words, or some of the things that we said last week. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, we said that Jesus is superior to angels. So Virginia, I'll just ask you, if you're not on the phone, my sister, what is it about Jesus that's superior to angels that we talked about last week? Just going over our background. Uh, he, um, I'm trying to see what to say here. Oh, that's okay. Somebody else that was thinking? While she's getting her thoughts together, what are we talking about? Jesus is superior to angels. Go ahead, Brother Wayne. He's the son of God, and, and only he's the only one that is superior to the angels because of his status with God. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So does anybody remember the example in scripture that God gave to say that Jesus is superior to angels from the last week's lesson? He asked two questions. He says, uh, but to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son and I have begotten you or I will be his father and he will be my son. There you go. Now, he never said that to angels. No. And as we mentioned last week, and we we studied in the book of Hebrews, uh, these people were converts. And they were coming into Christianity, and they were trying to bring stuff with them from their old life, such as the belief in angels and angels being superior. Mm -hmm. But uh, God asked those two questions. He said, uh, which one of the angels did I ever say you were my son, that I have forgotten you, and that I will be your father, 
and uh, you will be my son. I haven't said that to angels. So Jesus is superior to angels. When Jesus was baptized, God spoke. You know, this is my son. Mm -hmm. I'm well pleased. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He never said that to angels through the Mount of Transfiguration mm -hmm. uh, when God spoke. He never said that of angels. Brother Wade, you look like you had a, quite a thought on your mind. No, no, ma'am. I, I, I was just, uh, we were both saying the same thing. I was quoting it uh, when you were saying it. Oh, thank you. I just picked up a few little highlights in our introduction. If you, those of you who got a chance to read your Sunday school book, uh, this week's lesson examines how the prophecies of the coming Messiah and King were fulfilled with the birth of Jesus Christ. And today's lesson reveals the creative power of God through the miraculous conception of Jesus and shows his power to change our lives through divine revelation. I shall never forget, I was watching a television program once and it was a um, talk show and this, this guest came on and he, he just addressed Sherry Shepard, I believe, and said, do you really believe that? <laughs> mm. that, that? That Jesus was born of a virgin? And he was a newsman. I think it was Mike Gibson. I just could never forget that because he just questioned her so hard because he could not imagine such a concept. On mm -hmm. national TV, what made him do that? Mm -hmm. Other than the devil being the prince of the air, I don't know. <laughs> but Sherry stood her ground. She said, yes, I believe it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I will continue to believe it. She had that conviction. But I would think that the devil will come after us in all kind of ways trying to, even when we just don't expect on a talk show, national television, that someone would just pop up and ask that question. Mm -hmm. So the Bible teaches us we ought to always have a ready answer, you know, so we'll know how to answer when, when we're challenged. Okay. And then uh, today's lesson focuses on Joseph, who showed the right faith response to God's revelation. That's just straight out of our introduction in today's lesson. So let's move on to Christ born of Mary. I need someone to read verses 18 and 19, please. Go ahead on, go ahead on. Go on, brother Wade. <laughs> no, no, ladies first. Go ahead, ma'am. <sighs> now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was be betrothed to Joseph, before they, became, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Okay. All right. I was thinking I had a question, but I don't. Um, well, Brother Way, would, would you read that little screen for us since you and Virginia were going back and forth of who would read the scripture? <laughs> okay. Ah, this is a, a point that I, I was thinking, I was thinking about bringing up. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the Jewish people in that day, betrothal uh, engagement was equivalent to marriage, except that the man and woman did not live together. They were called husband and wife, and at the end of the engagement period, the marriage was consummated. If a betrothed woman became pregnant, it was considered adultery. Okay, go ahead with the next one. In the, eight, in the ancient Israelite society, a husband could demand that a woman uh, provide proof of her virginity. Parents provided this proof publicly to the elders. The proof, a bloody cloth, was given to the parents by their daughter as proof or her, I think that should be of, of her first sexual relationship with her husband. Wives who were unable to give this proof were stoned to death. How many of y'all out there thanking God for Jesus today? <laughs> 
because this this was an ancient practice and mm -hmm. we as i guess most women know there there is something about our anatomy that when you have your first sexual relationship is torn and the proof would be on the cloth that you had to show to your parents mm -hmm. and that is before the elders publicly mm -hmm. so um, what amazes me, and I know it does Jackie too, because we've had this discussion many times, that it, it never say, what happened to the boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, they couldn't, if they couldn't prove that she was a virgin by the, by the cloth, mm -hmm. it, you know, the law does say the man and the woman, but for some reason, when people be, were, and then we'll see that later, yeah. Tried to trick Jesus. They always want to use part of, of a scripture. But I, before I get ahead of myself, let me just ask this question. Can you give an example how Jesus negated stoning to death? Uh, while Jesus was on earth, mm -hmm. what did he do? You can just give me one example. He said, uh, if you are without sin, cast the first stone. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Thank God he did, because we how many stones would we have left in this <laughs> time period? Really? Yeah, yeah. The, the scripture that Virginia alluded to is, is found in uh, John 8. Go ahead and read that for me, Virginia, on the screen. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. What would you, what do you say? But what do you say? I can't read yeah. it. Is that, oh, oh, I had another part to that. What's the last sentence? I didn't he, okay. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Does anybody remember the conclusion of that uh, incident? No one was left standing for her. <laughs> no, he said, where are your accusers? Oh, yeah. they didn't hide till it and ran. Yeah. So. But they were guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brother Wade? Well, I'm going to start with two things. Oh, um, damn. <laughs> and that, you know, the, uh, uh, I, I think we all know, you know, kind of the backstory on that. Uh, as some would say, uh, uh, the lady, um, um, the gentleman uh, in the midst knew her. So, uh, you know, they were convicted. But, um, but it was funny uh, that, that uh, in order, of course, in order to commit adultery, you got to have two people. That's right. Mm -hmm. brought one people. <laughs> yeah, they only brought one one one, uh, one person, yeah. and and so you we're know, almost out of hang uh, out of towels. Out of no. Oh, Mari, you need to mute. Muted. Oh. Okay. okay, go ahead, but wait. So you know they don't, they don't, they only brought you know one person, and uh, uh, which wasn't correct to do, and, and uh, you know, and, and of course, as Jesus did say, you know. Who you know he would you know uh, among you you know without sin cast the first stone. So of course you know th they could not do that you know. And but uh, uh, when you look at it though, they, once again the scribes and Pharisees uh, they wanted to uh, 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 try to trick Jesus. That's why they came and they brought uh, the lady in front of them because they uh, once again they they were always looking to to uh, uh, to trick. They were always mm -hmm. looking to find fault you know with Jesus and his ministry and his teaching. And, right. and every time Jesus left them confounded, left them upset, mad, confused, because uh, because they were wrong and he was right. But you have you ever had someone that was so eager to uh, prove you wrong or get you in trouble that uh, uh, when they knew that they were wrong, the only thing they could do was leave mad? Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're trying to stop uh, Jesus, you know, he's getting yeah. less popular and they was just time at the time. Now, Pastor Payne, I, I think it is in Deuteronomy. I'm not going to quote it because I don't recall the exact chapter, but I think the law said you're supposed to bring both of them, as you know, out. But <clears throat> these people were trying to trick Jesus. 
And so they just brought the woman uh -huh. and say, now, what do you say? And when Jesus wrote in the crown and by the time he got up and looked at her and say, where are your accusers? They gone, uh -huh. you know? And that brother Wade, you alluded to the fact that her partner might have been in the crime crowd <laughs> yeah might say, let me get out of here before <laughs> she point me out <laughs> so virginia were you saying something i say her partner was in the crowd many of them oh my oh partners is seeing <laughs> they, they knew her yeah 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 okay <laughs> very good <laughs> All right. Now let's look at <clears throat> Matthews 20 through 25. <clears throat> Who can read that for us? 20 through 25. But yeah. wow. Who was that that we heard? Who was that? Yeah, Jack? Was... Wade? Somebody. Wade. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jackie. Go ahead, Sister Jackie. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." So, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Okay. Now, before we get into the meat of that scripture, did you all see any characteristics of Joseph that believers might want to have or that uh, they can pattern themselves after anything about joseph he believed in what god said he believed you oh, also he also thought about it before he made a rash decision about what to do about mm -hmm. mary mm -hmm. he considered it from all angles all right all right thank you and i heard you alice and uh thank you and virginia anybody else that's a good answer, Alice, <laughs> in Virginia. <laughs> it shows the, uh, the human side of, uh, of Joseph because Joseph was uh, uh, hurt and upset, you know, that, that this was happening to him. And, but it showed that he had self-control because he yeah. Yeah, this, and said, hey, uh, go ahead and, and have her stoned to death because uh, of what she, you know, what she did. So, you know, he was just, he was like, okay, I'm not going to do this. You know, uh, 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 you know, at the uh, you know drop of a hat, I, I'm going to do. You know, uh, uh, I'm not going to let feelings drive me. Mm. Uh, and I do believe, you know, Joseph prayed about it because you know he was hurt. Yes, yes. very good. Anybody he, else? Joseph, uh, you expected of him. Okay. I heard somebody else that trying to say something. Can you hear me? Oh yes, Pat. Oh, okay. It makes you think the characteristic of Joseph that when we hear God speaking to us, do we act on it? Do we portion it? Or do we say such and such? Joseph knew he believed in God. So when the angel spoke to him, he believed in what they were saying to go and take, go do this, go do that. And it makes me wonder how many of us when God speak to us, do we go do this? Do we go do that? Are we going to sit down and, and, and chop it up and analyze it? Or do we just go? But well, he just went. So I think that's a pattern we need to look at. Yeah. <laughs> just did what the angel said. Yeah. Very good. Another, 
another thing about this story is I always wonder how Mary got away with not being stoned to death. That's got to be a miracle there, too. And nobody talks about that. Oh, because, you know, uh, Joseph had some decisions to make. Yeah. And now, uh, Joseph thought maybe in his human mind that he had a choice of two things. Yeah. Either he could divorce her mm -hmm. or, and, or he can have her stoned. You know, mm -hmm. if he divorced her, he would just put her away quietly. That's yeah. why the scriptures say he put her away quietly. Mm -hmm. And um, But if he just publicly said what she had done, she was going to be stoned to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now those are human choices. Yes. But when God is in the picture, there's always another choice to yeah. any circumstances yes. or situation that you might be in. So yes. in, in Joseph's third choice was to marry her. Yes. <laughs> See, sometimes we get in these um, confused states because we think I can do this way. As the brother, uh, brother Wade way. would often say, I can do it that way. I, I don't right. see no way out of this, but this way or that way. That but, and Pat alluded to it. You know, we got to approach the father. You know, I'm in a situation. Mm -hmm. I don't That's see right. any way out of this. Could you right. help me? <laughs> you know, and, and the Bible says God knows the voice of his people. <laughs> and when we cry out to him, yes, he will help us. He will respond to yes, us. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. So yes, we may will. not see it, you know, but we got to trust it. Yes, yes. You know, don't don't just go by what you feel of how you see it. Well, That's I don't right. see it. Go by what God words. That's to right. You. All right. You know, and we'll deliver us out of that situation. Sister Smith. Yes. Okay, when Mary got pregnant through the Holy Spirit, right? He, she yes. didn't get pregnant through Joseph. So that's right. Why did he have to hide her away? Because the people would not have understood that. Mm -hmm. And the people would have wanted what they called justice at the time because the law says mm -hmm. that if she can't prove she's a virgin, she got to be stoned to death. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Now, um, I heard a lot of the characteristics that you all mentioned about Joseph. I didn't hear anybody say, well, he was compassionate. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he didn't want to, he did not want to see harm come to her because his first yeah. thought was to just put her away quietly. You know, yeah. send, her to, send her from Shreveport to Ohio where don't nobody know her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, until she had his baby. That's what a lot of people did yeah. back in the day. You yeah. know, they, doing great. You know, you they, they send them doing. children to these homes until that mm -hmm. baby was born, let the baby go up for adoption and come on back home. But they still doing it today. I know yeah. a lot of people still doing it today. Yeah. Sending them babies off. Okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard any lately, but I do know it was a highly practiced procedure. Back mm -hmm. then, you know. <laughs> you know, because it was a, just a shame to them. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, the, and the things that I came up with are pretty much all what you all said, that Joseph believed God. Mm -hmm. Now, who else is famous for believing God and it was counted unto him as <laughs> righteousness? Abraham. Abraham. Father Abraham. Yeah. He be, the Bible said he believed God. Yes. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. And I believe in one of these versions of this scripture, it says Joseph was a righteous man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes. Joseph, Joseph believed God. Yes. Okay. And then, as Virginia said, he meditated on the word of yes. God. The angel mm -hmm. brought the message because angels are messengers of God. Mm -hmm. He didn't do a rash, uh, quick decision, mm -hmm. you know, and oh no, she getting up out of here. She ain't gonna mm -hmm. shame me. No, <clears throat> he, he meditated. And when he got up, he woke up and he yeah. obeyed God. Now yeah. that's that's what kind of language? What's God's language? Love, love. obedience. Obedience. It's the language yeah. of God. 
You know, uh, Jesus said, if, if you love me, do what I say. Yeah, obey me. Yeah. You know, even uh, uh, the devil believed God <laughs> exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. he ain't going to be trying to do what God said do. Mm -hmm. So he obeyed. That's mm -hmm. an action. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was compassionate. compassionate. Yeah. 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 Yes, I heard somebody. Yes, uh, I, I think uh, in, in this we got to uh, uh, to get a clear understanding. We got to uh, uh, consider uh, uh, in this whole thing that the system and the system first was engagement. As mm. far as uh, that's how they became engaged, and that could yep. be they were uh, uh, young, and, and uh, uh, sometimes they were engaged when they were children. Yep. Uh, yeah, the betrothal period. Good. That's what they called man and wife. They didn't live together. You know, however, they were uh, considered man and wife, and the only way they could, uh, they could get, they had to get divorced in order not to, uh, you know, uh, in order to get out of that situation. And then the last one was marriage. You know, and that was, you know, uh, you know, the betrothal period was usually uh, a year. Um, you know, and then the last one was marriage. So I think we had to line that up so people could kind of, you know, uh, say, okay, well, how does this thing work? You know, yeah. and, and so we get a clear picture of it. Okay, because somehow mm -hmm. I thought on this screen we kind of mentioned that that the Jewish people in that day doing the the betrothal or engagement was equivalent to marriage, except the man and woman did not live together. They were called husband and wives. I think you even read this of mm -hmm. course, you know, and at the end of the engagement period, the marriage was consummated. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I learned it a little differently as in three stages. Uh, e, okay. B, and... okay, that's good. As long as we got it. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about the proof and all of that. Okay. And so now we just talked about the characteristics of Joseph. <clears throat> and now... And uh, we also read about this, the prophecy uh, being fulfilled, mm -hmm. that the Old Testament prophecies indicated that the Messiah would be born of a woman, mm -hmm. pick. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the Messiah would uh, be of the seed of Abraham, chick. And you can read that in Genesis 22 and 18. Uh, we read that uh, the Messiah would come through the tribe of Judah, check, of 49 through 10, when right before Jacob got ready to die, and he was going to bless all of his sons. Uh, the chapter 49 details all that, that Joseph said, and I thought Jeez. 49... It's very important to understand how, why Jesus had to come through the house of David or the line of David from the tribe of Judah, you know, because it was prophesied for all of that to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, 49.10 just reads that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, that ornamental staff that simulates sovereignty rulership mm -hmm. that it will never leave uh the tribe of judah mm -hmm. and the lawmaker would always be between judah's feet mm -hmm. but these are some old prophecies that old testament prophecies that indicated that the messiah um <coughs> would be, and also he would be of the family of david uh, many years ago, one of the most embarrassing moments I had is in, in a class and somebody said, why is it important that uh, Jesus <coughs> came from the house of David? And it, and it was crickets. It was crickets. I was a cricket. <laughs> the class was a cricket. <laughs> but now we know that it's because of the prophecies. And um, it proved God's word because these things actually happen. Oh, and that Jesus did come through the house of David or the lineage. Oh, what? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You know, I want to mute. 
Okay. I should ask y'all these questions about three names that you know that Jesus is the son of God is known as. In all you study and you know, every year we have the Christmas story. Every year we talk about it. What, what does it mean really? What's, the, what's three names assigned to God's son? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Oh, I heard Emmanuel, what else? Jesus. Jesus and the Messiah. Um, Messiah. Messiah. Okay. Uh, I didn't hear anybody say Christ, but I know it's in there. Who can read this slide for me, please? There are three names assistant to God's Son. Jesus, the name of Jesus means saviors and come from the Hebrews name Joshua. Jehovah, Savior, Christ, Mary, born with call, Jesus, the Christ, the word of Christ means anointed. It is the Greek equivalent, equivalent. equivalent of Messiah. <coughs> he is Jesus, the Messiah. <coughs> Describe who he is. God with us. The name Emmanuel is found in Isaac. Isaiah 7, 14, and 8, 8. Okay. So um, one name assigned is the name Jesus. Um, the name means Savior. It comes from a Hebrew word uh, named, uh, called by yeah. a name uh, in the ancient world. Mm -hmm. But when you when you look at Christ attached to it, and, and the writer says Mary's boy was called Jesus Christ, because the word Christ means anointed. It is in the Greek, it's called Messiah. Yeah. So Jesus is the tells us Christ. We just summed it up on this slide. Jesus is his human name. You know, there's another little boy that's out there called Jesus or Jesus or however they pronounce it. Mm -hmm. Christ is his official title, and Emmanuel means God is with us. All right. Now, and I know uh, my two things gonna have an answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> but what when we looked at verse and you all got your Bibles just turned to it uh, when the angel was speaking to um, verse in verse 23 uh, somebody read out verse 23 from your Sunday school book or something like that verse 23 verse Look. 23 it just uh, Okay, it, it just goes to show oh. you know, how unique Jesus is in his birth. Go ahead. Somebody got it? Look. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 23. They shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Okay. Yes, uh, the, the angel said, uh, behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son. Does anybody kind of remember the announcement that the angel made to Zacharias before uh, John the Baptist was born? Does anybody remember how that was worded? Uh, he told, um, is that when they would, he was, they met and they were telling he, that the angel was telling um, Zechariah that the woman would, which was Elizabeth, was going to be with child. Yes. They said and, the same. Yes. And and she laughed within herself. She okay. Didn't Elizabeth was pregnant and the angel told him that Elizabeth would bear 
the a son, now that's King James version, yeah. will bear you a son. Now this scripture said what? And we don't, uh, in the King James version, I believe it says that the virgin will be with child and she will bring forth a son. Mm -hmm. he, the angel did not say to Joseph that she will bear you a son. Right. As the angel said to uh, Zacharias to Elizabeth, about Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. But I just pr bring that out for us to just further realize the divinity of Jesus' birth. Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus was not born to Joseph as, right. <laughs> as was the custom. Mm -hmm. It just said the virgin shall bring forth a child. And that we know that that child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That child did not have an earthly father. father. So, mm -hmm. so you know, just that's just a little uh, trivia. Yeah. So <laughs> <think about it. laughs> that's all that was. Okay. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Do I have another question for y'all? What else am I overlooking? Somebody. <laughs> okay. I think that's all Jack and I had talked last night. And she said, Woo, this is going to be a short lesson. And it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, Oh, God, I'll make it work. <laughs> I say, That's what I said last week. And God took over. <laughs> and we were there past time. Yeah. So, yeah. um, uh, Mona, I'm going to just ask you to read the closing thought, if you can see that on the screen. He hadn't been out. He was instead, of making, instead of making rash decisions or even thoughtful decisions that are not sensitive to the leadings of the Holy Spirit, Amen. followers of Jesus Christ should include the spiritual discipline of prayer and Bible reading in their decision-making process. This will enable us to know God's good and perfect will. Jesus came to save us. There will always be someone here on earth who needs a savior. Yes. Evangelism needs to continue until everyone in the world has had an opportunity to hear the good news about our savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. So, Two, th two points we want to make. Instead of making rash decisions, thinking that you just have this way out or that way out, instead of considering God's way out, you know, because um, sometimes we have good in intentions, they're thoughtful intentions, but are we listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit? You know, and so how do we do that? We, we're going to always be in prayer. Uh, Second Timothy say that we're going to study the word. We're going to show ourselves approved so that we can rightly divide the word of truth. And that's paraphrased. We need to consider these things in our decision making process. And then we will know the good and perfect will of our father. Mm -hmm. Let's not always rush into stuff because something has shook us up and we just right. don't know which way to turn. Mm -hmm. You know, just let's let's go to God in prayer, meditate on his word in our decision making. Now what did God's word say about this? You know, mm -hmm. and it will help you make a decision. The last part that Sister Mona read I love because we get confused why Jesus came. You know, it's not so much for us to celebrate it one time a year with the beautiful gifts and decorations. Jesus came to save us. Yes. And until Jesus comes back, it's going to always be somebody that needs to be, that needs a savior. So we as believers, we got to get out there and evangelize and tell everybody that they have an opportunity to know Jesus and tell them what the good news is. 
that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whatever category you fall in, whosoever believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. To me, that's good news. <laughs> that Jesus died, he was buried, but on the third day, he arose with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. Yeah. And now, where is Jesus today, right now? Sitting on the right hand of Father. Thank you, Miss Alice. Uh -huh. Sitting on the right hand of the Father, God Almighty. And Brother Wade, what we say the right hand represents? It's, it's a position of favor, but it's also uh, uh, including that is power. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, and he's honored. Uh, sitting at the right hand and all of that that Brother Wade just said. So we got the power. Jesus is up there. He's interceding for us. If we need help, let us ask him for it mm -hmm. so that God will be glorified. Amen. 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 We give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> good. Okay, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Um, Young people department, do you have a review this morning? I don't know if Sonia's on or if Ayana is. is Sonia's not. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, Sonia's not on, and um, Ayana does not have a review this morning. So. Okay, so we will go to our most gracious and capable pastor for the review of today's lesson. Amen. All right. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sister morning. Smith, and all of you for all of your involvement this morning. Um, one thing I can safely say is. Uh, quite frankly, Joseph is my favorite um, character from the Nativity story. And the reason why he is my favorite character from the Nativity story is because Joseph and I have a lot in common. Yeah. Joseph was asked <laughs> to be a stepfather. Man, man. And, um, and so when I look at Joseph's story, um, I see it um, a lot deeper than just, oh, he was so nice. Because Joseph wasn't just agreeing not to stone her he was agreeing to put up with a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. that wasn't his yeah um because you know again we've made this a nice soft and pretty story yeah. but we keep talking about what well, he was going to put her away well you know what when a woman's pregnant it's kind of hard to hide it after a moment yeah <laughs> mm. and folks are going to do the math wait a minute joseph y'all got married mm -hmm. on this day yeah and then she gave birth this day. Now we don't we don't have any computers and we don't have Google, but we we know how long it takes to make a baby. So either it's yours and you ain't as righteous as you said you were, or she was creeping on you. And he had to put up with that. And we know he had to put up with that because later on in Jesus' life, they said, Jesus, we don't know who your daddy is. Mm -hmm. And so Joseph had to deal with that. And, and, and so when we look at Joseph in this story and we look at what he was, you know, one of the words we did not throw out there is Joseph was forgiving. Yeah. Now, and, and we don't usually use it this way, but what, how do I define forgiveness? Giving up my right to hurt you for hurting me. Joseph was hurt. Yes. And he very well could have hurt back. Mm -hmm. But he decided not to by, uh, by listening to the spirit. But also it was a continuous forgiveness because he had to continue to deal with people saying, you know, that boy don't look nothing like you, Joseph. You know, we, we, we was wondering about that. And, and, and so, you know, we don't see much after Joseph, after they get back from, um, actually, after they get back from Egypt and, and all of that. But I can only imagine, again, as a father of someone who has children who have none of him, um, what he had to go through. And the, the faith, the... Um, the commitment that he showed and not just the commitment of that, but you know, we pass over the other part too. He had no marital relations with her until after she gave birth. So by my math, that's about six months. Cause she went to, she went to uh, Elizabeth. She stayed for three months, came back. So sometime in that six months, they were, they were married and they didn't consummate the relationship. That's a brother that was committed to doing the will of God. 
And so um, when we look at this whole uh, picture, Joseph had a crisis. And I, I think I preached a sermon once called Crisis at Christmas and a crisis of his identity because people were picking on him, a crisis of just everything he believes. Because all of a sudden, this woman he loved, he, he absolutely loved Mary. He, of course, he wanted to marry her. Now she's pregnant. This ain't ever happened before. And, and so the crisis that he displayed, but then again, in the midst of his crisis, we see God showing up. And I think Sister Smith said it very well on that last slide, um, the, the fact of um, God being willing to um, involve himself in our personal lives as we deal with these decisions that we have to make. And, um, and, and so as we move forward, we look at the story, you know, this is familiar scripture, we read it every year. But one of the things that I try to, I want to make sure we don't do is let familiarity breed contempt that we're just so familiar with it, we don't care anymore. Because these were real people. And one thing that I know, people ain't changed that much. I don't care if it was Israel in 2000 years. You let somebody, let one of our young girls show up pregnant talking about it's from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. We ain't gonna believe it. We're, we're, and so, but all of a sudden we, we painted this beautiful picture. Of, oh, everybody just looked at Mary and they, oh, look at Mary. Come on now, mm -mm. people ain't changed that much. And so Mary and Joseph were real people who were struggling to serve God. And so when we think God has put something in us, something great that he's told us to do, and people doubt us, we should expect it because they doubted Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. and, and so I just want to encourage us as we go through this to see God's, um, God's love in the midst of the miracle, that it wasn't going to be easy. Um, she was blessed and highly favored. Joseph, uh, I believe, was very favored as well because he was allowed to be the stepfather of Jesus, but it wasn't going to be easy, but God was going to be with them through it all. All right. Uh, that's all I have. Any questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you very much again, Sister Smith, uh, Sister Annette, Lois, uh, Mara, great, great to hear from Pat, all of you, Alice, everybody speaking up and, and sharing today. And uh, it's always wonderful to have you uh, with us. I will, once again, this is another Sunday that I will praise God um, for the fact that we have Zoom and all of, and Facebook and all that we're doing. Actually, Sister Vicki also want to throw a shout out to her because she's been throwing out answers all over Facebook <laughs> um, and, and those that are watching on Facebook. But I will praise God for Zoom today because it is about 40 degrees outside and raining. So yeah. um, I have a sinking feeling that my sanctuary, Sister Price, might have been a little empty today. <laughs> I mean, y'all faithful people, it's some other folks, some other folks that just would have been like, oh, it's too cold out there. It's wet. I, I ain't, we ain't got no good parking. It's going not, and, and, but, but you know what? We got Zoom. Yeah. Everybody can show up and stay warm and dry and get their worship on. So yeah. in about 33 minutes, we going to be warm and dry and we going to get our worship on. So I thank you all. Let us share together in the church school creed. I believe, I believe my AME church school, school must, grow must grow and grow. grow. And, and that I must make it my priority, priority to make it to make so. It make so. It so. Every, every member of the every, every Christian every worker, every worker trained, so that a worker, a worker need not be ashamed. ashamed. This we ask in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We will see you in about half an hour. Yes. Y'all, Pam, uh, Shannon, say good morning. Huh? What? Good morning. Say good morning. Phone. What did you say? Good morning. Good morning. I'm making an announcement. No, I'm not making an announcement. She just said oh. good morning. All right, then. Good morning. Yeah, I'll see y'all later, ladies. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, bye.